Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, we're over here at the biomes exhibit for the museum, which, with the exception of the four larger biomes, the Frozen Ocean, the Shattered Savannah Plateau, Mountains, and the Badlands Mesa, I have completed all of the biome dioramas that I wanted to exhibit here. So we've seen all of these in a previous video. We even saw a couple of the other ones in the background come together as well. But as of right now, we have a mega tiger biome. So right here, obviously represented by the large spruce tree. We have a roofed forest, which contains mushrooms as well as the traditional dark oak trees. And you'll also find bits and pieces of oak and birch poking through the canopy as well. We have the tall birch forest, which was actually fairly easy to make these tall birch trees. All I did was pillar up a few blocks, place a dirt block, grow the sapling on top of that and artificially place in a few of the trunk blocks further down. You would never know the difference. We have a flower forest right here with the traditional oak and birch trees. We've got every single type of flower that you'll find in a flower forest represented here in small or large quantities. I'm thinking about maybe putting a beehive a bee nest rather in one of these as well but maybe we'll save that for another time we've got a bamboo forest right here with the podzol as well podzol is actually one of those features of the bamboo forest biome that you might overlook if you're just trying to remember what it is but there is definitely a lot of podzol around we've got the bamboo growing tool here as well a sunflower plains biome which is very like little difference from a regular plains biome aside from the abundant amount of sunflowers a lukewarm ocean, which is slightly different from the ocean biome over here in that most of the floor is made up of sand. We got a bit of kelp and seagrass growing in there as well. And of course, the warm ocean biome, which has all of the different corals. And as you can see, I've just about finished doing that at the time of this recording. And the warm ocean biome has been the last one to go in. We did the mushroom fields a little bit earlier in the live stream where I put the last few of these together. But now if you look at all of these from up here on top of the wall, it looks like a much more complete exhibit, and I'm very happy that we got all of that done. Minecraft's biomes laid out in front of us in all their glory. And yes, there are variants of these biomes. There are, you know, warm, lukewarm, and various different types of oceans that don't really have all that much difference between the two. There are, you know, Spruce Tiger M, Modified Jungle Edge, whatever all of the other ones are. I feel like they aren't really different enough to be represented here. And so with all of the different biome types represented here, apart from the other four I've highlighted, I think this exhibit is ready to have walls up around it and start to think about where we are moving on from this. Having started the generated structures over here though, with the Jungle Temple, Desert Temple, and the Pillager Outpost, I've been thinking about the generated structures that occur in other parts of the Minecraft world and in other dimensions. And that is why today I want to go back to our nether exhibit and starting from the edge of the basalt delta here, which I still haven't made enough changes to, I still need to get a couple of these things changed around, I want to start a nether fortress exhibit. It's actually going to link up to this room over here with the tools, since basically as soon as you've got hold of a decent set of tools and can craft yourself a nether portal, you could potentially find a nether fortress. We're going to have a bunch of the nether fortress structure represented here. It's going to bridge out basically from the area where you can walk through each of these nether biomes onto the platforms of a nether fortress and around. And we're going to go through the anatomy of a nether fortress for this episode and try and squeeze in as many of the different features as we can into a relatively small space. Both inside and outside the Nether Fortress need to be represented in here, and we're probably going to put a Bastion somewhere in this area as well, although that might have to wait for another video because I need to do a bit more studying of Bastions to see what I can try and reproduce here in the overworld and what is simply unnecessary and time-consuming to do. But the first thing we need to do really is establish what components of a nether fortress we want to represent and so we're going to go to the nether and we're going to take a good long look at what components a nether fortress is actually comprised of. Well I've got to be honest with you between all of the farms and projects and various clearances that I've done in the nether it's very difficult to find a nether fortress that has previously been untouched but I have found one. This one is about 2,500 blocks out on the Z axis, and it's got all of the features that I'm looking for, really. It's got a few exposed walkways here so that blazes can float up and shoot at me from a distance, but also so that we can take a look at the feet 
of the fortress. And that's not really going to be a huge problem because these will typically just extend downwards into, you know, whatever terrain is nearby, be it lava or netherrack or whatever other terrain fortresses happen to spawn in. But the exterior of a nether fortress is usually a labyrinth of walkways where you can find yourself wandering around on ledges and parapets before you make your way to the internal section of the fortress over there. So I'm going to kick the replay mod on for a bit here just so we can take a good look at this from the outside while I explore it from a first person perspective and hopefully we'll come away with a pretty decent draft of what what constitutes a nether fortress. So out here we have a bunch of the raised walkways and crossroad sections that usually make up the outside of a nether fortress and despite the fact that the structure goes into the netherrack here, this is still technically speaking the outside of the fortress. A lot of this will just burrow through whatever terrain generates because of course the terrain in the nether is going to be a little bit unpredictable and that often terminates in an area like this where there'll be an archway now this doesn't actually signify the interior of the fortress tempting though it is these thresholds here with three fences along the top of a doorway and three blocks of height left for the player to walk under and of course for any wither skeletons to walk under these are actually just changes in elevation of the fortress's external walkways so as you head through these areas you're not actually entering an enclosed section of the fortress these crossroads will generate like this and will often lead to a blaze spawner at the end of one of these corridors but the blaze spawners are meant to be on the exterior part of the fortress you occasionally find them enclosed in netherrack but they aren't traditionally speaking on the inside of the fortress you'll typically find them as you're exploring the walkways along the outside and that is why you'll never find a blaze spawner with a nether brick roof over the top of the entire thing because they are really technically part of the outside of a fortress and you'll often find them directly over lava lakes if you found a fortress that generates primarily in one of those larger empty lava lake biomes. You also won't typically find any loot chests on these external walkways either even if it seems to dead end in a nice enclosed space like this all of the loot chests in a nether fortress are going to be on the inside and the inside actually begins over here if you take a look at this archway here the entrance to the fortress is actually over here where you find this one block lava pool right here surrounded by a ring of nether brick blocks and that is technically the entrance to the interior of the fortress no matter how many balconies may be around here and how many other features of the fortress generate from this point we are now inside the fortress and you can tell from the nether brick roof over our heads that that is where we're supposed to be in the interior and now this is where we start to find loot chests around these corners and occasionally at the end of longer corridors we also start to find staircases that lead down into the bowels of the fortress although occasionally those can be cut off just by the terrain generation or the end of the nether fortress generation but occasionally they lead around to other sections of the fortress where some winding corridors will take you down to potentially a loot chest but once again this this one seems to have led out to the open air it's kind of an unfortunate set of fortress generation but what we're seeing here is largely corridors made out of the same stuff the same material throughout the same patterns throughout so if we wanted to we could probably condense this into a fairly small space I think potentially the most iconic features of the fortress are going to be these little nether wart gardens that generate around the base of some of these staircases because they're often what players will look for when they're exploring a fortress like this. I guess a corridor with a loot chest would probably be a good idea as well. And then these lead up to further sections of the fortress above where typically this building will have kind of a railing around the outside made of nether brick and fences and then that will lead into a deeper section of the fortress where you'll find more wither skeletons, you'll find more loot chests and arrangements of the same sorts of corridors. But once again, none of these are going to lead to a blaze spawn and none of them are going to lead to anything especially exciting. They are typically repetitive clusters of the same thing. So I think we can actually represent all of the features of a nether fortress, the anatomy of a nether fortress within a relatively small space at the museum and still make sure that the nether fortress feels representative of a fortress you'd find generating in the world.
And as it goes, this fortress is even a relatively small example. There's a couple of rooms over here and a central structure there, but really that is that is kind of it. <laughs> so we don't need to worry too much about the size of these things. Practically speaking, we can reproduce everything that makes up a nether fortress within a relatively small space. So I think I've seen enough. I think we've got a decent look at what makes up a nether fortress and we've got some replay mod footage we can fall back on as reference material. I think it's time to head back to the museum and have a go at building our own nether fortress out in the overworld. And you might be looking at that nether fortress wondering where on earth we're going to get all of those blocks to build the nether fortress up from. I'm not going to be smelting netherrack for my nether bricks because of course we have taken down a fair few nether fortresses in our time and while this one was of course largely demolished by TNT flying machines and the occasional ghast, I've actually got myself a whole bunch of nether brick in here from the demolition of this fortress from the areas that I had to remove manually or a little bit more delicately. So we've got a few chests here full of material. We've got a bunch of fences and nether brick blocks already in there, including some other stuff that I might want to salvage and bring back. We've got a fair amount of the nether brick in the chests behind here as well, and there is a bit of netherrack from the surrounding area as well. We've also got the nether brick that I saved up from the demolition of our first nether fortress, the one where I set up my first ever with a skeleton farm, and we're going to use a fair amount of that as well. So I've got a couple of shulker boxes with me. I'm going to head over to the chests, which are slightly closer to my spawn nether hub so that I can easily make my way to and from the museum project with a couple of shulker boxes. And we're going to take all of the supplies over to the museum, and we're going to build this thing in the form of a time lapse. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> well, this, this is different. This feels very, very strange, but I have a nether fortress now. And to be honest, it doesn't look all that much unlike a naturally generated nether fortress. There are a couple of things that I have kind of fudged and of course it is contained within a relatively small area because I didn't really want this to take up more than you know a decent sized room of the museum so I kept everything condensed and like I said folded back on itself a little bit but I have managed to connect it up to the tools exhibit over here so I think that turned out pretty well with the walkways coming out meeting at a crossroads here we have on this side over here we've got this step up that goes towards the blaze spawners, which are currently represented by a block of soul sand each, but I have got myself a double blaze spawner fortress. <laughs> it feels quite good, I guess. Um, yeah, coming down here, this is the entrance into the main fortress. We obviously have this entrance blocked off by the presence of the blaze spawner. We have this one just kind of petering off into nothing in the way that they sometimes do. But here we have our entrance where we will put a bucket of lava eventually, and I've been giving a little bit of thought to how I'm going to mob-proof this place. Because, of course, we don't want natural overworld mobs walking around in here. But, to be honest, I sort of feel weird lighting it up because, I mean, with torches, it's just going to feel like it's already been explored, which I guess might be the most natural state you might find one of these in. But if we put any other kind of lighting here, it seems like it's, you know, implying that you'd find lanterns or something like that in a nether fortress which you don't and the only real light source you find in here is that one block of lava we could have lava flowing from some of the landscape around here but again i'm worried about my own safety just idly walking around the museum not really looking where i'm going and wandering into lava sources all day so i am not entirely certain about that i put torches around here for now the two things i need to do the two finishing touches i need to make are planting the little nether wart garden around the staircase here which took probably the longest out of anything just because I wasn't certain how tall it needed to be and I wasn't sure about the height of certain things in this room, but I think we managed to get that figured out. We blocked off the back wall there, which doesn't normally happen, but I didn't really have anything else to put down there that wasn't just going to be a repeat of what we already had. Up here, we have this corridor, and that's where I want to put the other thing, which is a loot chest in this corner and a loot chest in that corner. And this, we're actually going to put some typical nether fortress loot in. A couple of gold ingots, maybe some iron horse armor and a gold sword in that one. And in this one, we'll put one gold ingot, a saddle and some diamond horse armor. And of course, nothing exciting. <laughs> I think you might find a couple of obsidian, a couple of flint and steel, that kind of thing. Occasionally, you find fire charges and whatnot in these chests as well. So there's a loot pool that we could pull from. Of course, you'd be looking for diamonds maybe if you were in a nether fortress and looting all of the chests. But really, it is just nice to have those loot chests represented. Around this corner, we actually have a staircase that leads down to nothing or, well, it leads to a couple of openings out to the surface. Here we've got uh, a little bit of bridge that you could hop across to if you were feeling daring and there wasn't lava below, or this one which just dead ends up here. And of course we could make this more winding and labyrinthine and larger if we wanted to, but I thought all of the elements really have been represented here. I can't think of anything that is missing from this as a representation of a nether fortress. It's even got a few areas like this where the terrain just naturally falls through and you could plummet to your death, especially if there was lava down there. I'm going to put some magma blocks down there, actually. I think this would be kind of fun. And I've wanted to include some more nether terrain blocks in here for a while. Underneath here, though, of course, as you saw in the time lapse, is all open and I've just lit it up in the areas that we didn't need to have some nether fortress blocks around or some netherrack to show that there was nether terrain present and I had to elytra my way out of there and then come down onto these magma blocks and oh there we go okay not taking too much damage from this there we go though and oh look <laughs> the wandering trader seems to have wandered his way out of this hole and of course we have the mandatory now pillager patrol. Well, folks, I hope you enjoy your brand new nether terrain. Now, I am going to do a little bit more landscaping around here. I want to add in some magma blocks here and there to account for the fact that we don't have any lava around here. Maybe let's start that by replacing these last few grass blocks there with lava, because this obviously kind of goes downhill towards where you might find a lava lake. I might add in some quartz and gold ore that I brought over here with me as well. 
and it was really funny building this and sleeping every so often because it felt like I was sleeping in the nether at times, which was pretty funny, all things considered. But that is a pretty decent facsimile of a nether fortress built in the overworld and represented as part of the generated structures exhibits here at the museum. So I hope that you folks enjoyed this video. It's fun to take a look at the anatomy of these structures every so often and if you just want to impress your neighbours you might want to have a go at building one of these things in the overworld yourselves. The only thing I can recommend is make sure you've taken a nether fortress down first so that you've got enough nether brick blocks and you're not stuck smelting netherrack for the rest of your days. But for me that's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did please do leave a like on it for me. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take Take care, bye for now.